cycle. I can't excite you. Welcome AIW Wrestling fans to another episode of Behind the Curtain and today I am here with AIW Absolute Women's Champion, the walking episode of Cops, Mickey Knuckles. Now Mickey, AIW Wrestling fans, they're no stranger to you. No. Uh, you get serenaded every time you come in with that world famous chant, you're about to get your effing head kicked in, <laughs> which I know you appreciate it's greatly. Been, it's phenomenal the, the, the beat that they have with that. <laughs> well, they, yeah. you know, Cle Cleves aren't really known for you. Beats, but look, the whole purpose of these interviews is to find out behind the press. Okay. okay. We want to get to know what makes up Mickey Knuckles. Okay. So, Mickey, first of all, let's start at the beginning. Where did you get your formal training for professional wrestling? I got my formal training from IWA Mid South, Ian Rock, and Chris Hero. Um, okay. They would bring in other trainers to help train me, like uh, Mark Wolf, Bullpain, Duke Cold Scorpio, CM Punk. I mean, I got very, very spoiled very young. So, so you had a laundry list of names coming in to train you. So, now out of all those amazing trainers that you had, was there one that really focused on you and really made Mickey Knuckles who she is today? Mark Wolf and Chris Hero took a lot of time with me. Um, okay. They would make sure I would go to Chris Hero's house all the time, get wrestling tapes, do my research and study. Um, he would constantly have me write down formats of matches and where things should go and they focused on much more than just being in the ring and having the in-ring ability. They focused on uh, the plausibilities of, of everything. You have to think about so many things when you're in there, including, you know, the fans, what they want to see, what they want and want to hear. Um, so Chris Hero and Mark Wolf were, were two very big ones. I, I'd be a fool not to say that Ian Rotten helped out as well. Uh, but as far as as far as people who had the biggest influence as far what I am right now, it's Chris Hero. Okay, getting back to Ian Rotten a little bit now, he, he's been a kind of a storm cloud of controversy throughout the wrestling industry. Do you have any like little short stories or any comments that you would like to share about your time spent with Mr. Rotten? Or are you pleading the fifth on me? <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to say this. To, to, to be Without him, I would not be where I am today. Take okay. that as you want. I'll take that. that, that, that that's a very politically correct answer. Well, I'll take it. There you go. <laughs> now, Getting your form of years in IWA Mid-South, mm -hmm. what doors did IWA Mid-South open up for you? IWA Mid-South opened up a lot of doors, especially with the NWA, TNA obviously as you know, WXW in Germany. Uh, I've been there two or three times now, okay. and I wrestled in England because of IWA. Now let's focus a little bit on your TNA career, because mm -hmm. again, there's a lot of controversy surrounding your TNA career. Okay. And, and I've actually had conversations with you before in the past where you say your departure from TNA was the best thing that ever happened to you. Mm -hmm. My leg break was the oh, best thing. Oh, your leg break, okay. Me. Well, yes. well take us back. let's start off with the positive side, okay? You, you made it to TNA. To, uh, talk about your time with the beautiful people and your time at TNA. When I showed up, it was pretty much uh, Jeff Jarrett pulled me aside and said, I heard you could take a really good ass with <laughs> I said, if that's what you need me to do, yes, sir, I'll do that. He goes, I heard you can give it as good as receive it. Of course, that just made me ecstatic. I was like, that's what you tell me to do, absolutely. Um, I was pretty much friends with a lot of guys in, in the TNA locker room, Homicide, Samoa Joe, Abyss, those guys I had seen a lot, especially at IWA. So it wasn't like I was walking into a whole new atmosphere with people I had never met before. The, the, on the other side of that is there is a lot of girls, and if anybody's been in the locker room with a lot of girls, you understand that there's always going to be some cattiness. Okay. I'm a new girl coming into a, an area where these girls pretty much, you know, spend the whole year trying to get on these pay-per-views and things like that, and I was just coming right in and doing that, so I can understand where I would get the cattiness. But, I mean, you run into girls like Gail Kim, who is an absolute sweetheart, Velvet Sky, she was a doll to work with, um, ODB, I had met ODB and worked with her several times before, especially for IWA and Ed Schumann up in uh, Chicago. So I had already known uh, quite a few of the girls. Um, I, did, I did a couple matches for TNA. The, the big one was the pay-per-view where I made the debut. I came in and did, did the, the, the six-man with Gail Kim, ODB, and Roxy against me and the beautiful people. And that was a lot of fun. And they had a lot of goals and aspirations that they wanted me to fulfill. The bad part about that is a week to two weeks before I broke my leg, actually, I was on TV wrestling, and, and the, golf cart, or the grocery cart I had hit my leg at a perfect angle. And I had gotten this really deep, what I thought was just a thigh bruise. Went to wrestle Sarah Del Rey and told her, look, I've got a thigh bruise, if you don't mind, you know. I, and I never point out anything to anybody. I try not to. Um, end up doing a dive, snapped my femur right in half, and where I snapped it, I had a crack from the match on TV. Oh, wow. Um, they did the surgery. 
they told me I was healed that November. I went back to wrestling, still couldn't run, couldn't jump, couldn't do a lot of things with it, couldn't lift it to the side, had a lot of pain, told them I was having pain, I went back every month and you know how doctors are, they hear you're a pro wrestler, they tell you, you're just trying to get pain pills or it's, it's all in your head. And I went back in April and said, look, I'm having a ton of pain. I don't know what's wrong, I want to extra. Doctor comes back and says, Miss Knuckles, I don't know how to tell you this. Not only is your leg broke, it was never healed. I pulled up the x-rays from November, there was an inch and a half gap between two pieces of bone. Rod was the only thing holding in place. I had been wrestling this entire time with broken leg. So then I had to have a second surgery. So I spent like two years out because of this. Um, and by then, you can't expect somebody to wait around forever. TNA did make the public announcement that if my leg healed, that they would be happy to have me back home. Well, it took two years, and by two years going on, people were gone. So, but you never know. Okay. Now, you, you made the comment that it was the best thing that ever happened. Yes. Let, let's expand on that. Going from what a lot of people consider, because most people do consider the TNA knockoffs division far superior than what the WWE puts out. Okay. You're at the, the top of the mountain for women's wrestling. You're out with a leg injury, and you claim it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Explain a little more along those lines. When I, when I say it's the best thing that ever happened to me, I'm not meaning career-wise, which, which inevitably I believe it'll be the best thing to happen. I was in a very rough situation. Um, financially, I, I was getting into a lot of trouble, not due to my own circumstance, but circumstance of, of some others. Uh, we're not going to go to that. And, uh, hmm. and, uh, and there was a lot of problems uh, okay. that if I would stay with TNA and not broken my leg, I wouldn't have been able to see it because I wouldn't have been slapped in the face with it on a daily basis. When I broke my leg, I would sit there and I had to deal with it. Okay. And, and I had to realize that this wasn't right. Something was not right. And it took, and I honestly believe this, you know, I'm not a very spiritual, very religious person, but I do believe things happen for a reason. And I believe that there might have been a reason that my leg didn't heal the first time. Maybe there was um, a message that I wasn't getting. Okay. So when I finally started getting the message and, and had the second surgery, I left IWA and Ian, Ian Rotten and his family officially oh, the week before I had my second surgery. And they said after I had my second surgery, I healed so fast that they don't understand what the, the problem was between then and now. Um, so I think it was the best thing to happen to, to me because maybe the circumstance I was in was not the right circumstance to be in for that. Does that make any sense? Yes. Um, now I'm at my own power. I can do what I want to do with the rest of the business. I've changed the Mickey Knuckles character so much that now if you look at then and now it's two different people because then I wasn't who I wanted to be. Now I am who I want to be. I have fun with it. The crowd has fun with me. It's it's more of a rewarding experience why I started this. Um, and hopefully, you know, I have fun now. In the future, if I make money out of it, great. If not, I could say I always did something that let me have so much fun and I made a little bit of a living at it and you know how many people can say that. Exactly. Now, our, our first opportunity to see you in AIW is an absolution. You wrestled Haley Hatred, yes. representing Team Sexy. Now, <laughs> look that up, folks, because if you want to see the old Mickey Knuckles, Mickey Knuckles comes to the ring in plain green tights with the flannel shirt hanging off of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how it, it, describe your very first experience here at AIW. It was different. Uh, I had been very sheltered in wrestling. The, the companies I'd worked for were. My bookings were managed by Ian Rodney. Okay. So that whole aspect was his centralization. When I came to AIW, it was a different atmosphere because you had Haley Hatred who, when I first wrestled her, she dropped me on, my, on chairs the wrong way and I almost broke my neck and nobody, yeah. So when I came here, it was the first time I wrestled her since I broke my neck. Everybody was seeing this. There was so much heat and build up behind it. People thought that we had so many problems with each other that she tried. They said she tried to end my career. They also said that I wanted retaliation, you know, and a little bit, maybe a little bit of that. <laughs> um, but when, when I came here, it was like the crowd was, was a whole different entity than what I was used to. You're used to, in IWA, the bloodthirsty. They want to see somebody get hurt. They want to see somebody get pummeled. You know, it's it's a very vicious crowd. Here, not only do they want to see somebody, you know, in the ring, physical contact, but they also want to be entertained. They also want you to interact with them because they want to feel part of the show. So it was a whole different atmosphere for me, and it actually allowed me to expand and learn. So. Okay. Fast, fast, fast forward just a little bit. You're back in an AIW ring. This time that the world is not enough, and you're facing 
at the time, the AIW Women's Champion, Angel Dust. Completely different wrestler from Haley Hager. Yes. Not only in style, but in size. Tell us about your match with Angel Dust. I was the bad guy. <laughs> I, uh, I was able to come out and tell people, you know, when you go to hell and your mom should have never had you. And, you know, she says learn to swallow instead of spit. Um, <laughs> so it, it was a totally different way than that because she's so much smaller. But I'm, she kind of reminded me of Daisy Hayes, and I know she told me she gets that a lot, even though she doesn't try to do that. She's just a naturally smaller girl, and I didn't know what to expect from her. With Daisy, you know, especially years of working with her, and at the one time she was the only girl I was working with for a solid six months straight. With Daisy, you know, yeah, she's little, she's going to hit you, she's going to hit you hard. With Angel Dust, you had no idea about that, and so she really surprised me a lot in that match. That was also done in a bar, if I believe correctly, correct? correct. And um, it, people were drinking, so people were having a little bit more fun with that match. And at the beginning, there was a couple of cat calls, people not used to seeing two girls and everything else. And I'm a big girl, I'm not going to lie. I like my food. I like to eat. It's not all fat, though. <laughs> So coming out to the ring and hearing the shamus and stuff like that, I was like, I got your shamu. And as soon as we started making contact and going at it, it, it was like the crowd just totally switched to, oh, these girls aren't here just to patty cake with each other. These girls are here to actually compete. So it, once again, every time I've been to AIW, I've learned something new, from if not from the people I'm working with, but from the crowd as well. And, and it's just, you all have created such a fulfilling environment here for wrestlers. Even wrestlers who are sustained in the wrestling business, people who already know their craft and everything. Like, you've got Masato here tonight, you've got Paulo here, and I guarantee you, either one of those men that you talk to after a match, they're going to tell you that either they learned something or they had a blast and experienced something that they probably haven't experienced in a lot of places. Okay, now let's move on to Girls' Night Out, Arena Libra. Everybody wants to know what happened with Mina Libra's foot. Big controversy again. Okay, so she's up on the, on the top rope, and I was getting ready to suplex her. Missed timing, miscommunication, obviously. Um, she went before I even had my foot up on the rope, and that was my bad leg. So instead of going with her, and I kept seeing in my mind, if I went with her, we were going to knock nonsense. And that's the last thing you want to do is knock somebody out by headbutting each other on the mat like that. I mean, it's a horrible thing. So I thought, well, I'll just flip her up, and hopefully she'll stay up above her. No, nah, that didn't happen. Her feet went out from her to her and she got caught and twisted. So it was just a bad accident. There was there's no ill will behind it. I never had ill will towards anybody I wrestle. And she's doing much better now though. She said she's healed completely. Right, so. Okay. Now let's move on to another opposite end of the spectrum. We're going from Angel Dust to Jessica Hat. The woman you defeated for the AIW Absolute Women's Championship. The woman that keeps running from me. Woman running from you, all right? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your disdain, first of all, for Jessica Havoc because she seems to be running from you, and how fulfilling was it for you to come full circle in AIW and capture the absolute women's title? The first time you all actually looked me against her, do you all remember that? Yes? Something happened, she couldn't come, that's how I ended up wrestling in the labor. Okay. Okay. Um, the second time, I was supposed to wrestle her at that AIW show. I show oh, up, yes. I get told I have to wrestle at Allison K. And yes, I remember. I still have yes. chest hair missing from when you grabbed my collar. Yes. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> yes, uh, I but, that very well. And, and not, nothing against Allison K, but I really wanted that match with Jessica Hatt. She's a very strong competitor. She's very good at what she does. I wanted to see how we would mesh in the ring and, and how we would mix it up. Um, ended up wrestling Allison K that night. Ended up losing because of Jessica Havoc, if I believe right. And then came turn around and... Jessica came out to the ring, and I got to look at the fine print that you all gave me when I signed the, the deal for the contract on, on the title, and it realized uh, I can challenge her at any time. So I took, I took motive towards that and, and did what I needed to do. Now, since then, we've been booked against each other twice, and both times she has not attended. So I'm saying you're running. You need to meet with me. You need to get this done and over with and just let happen what's going to happen and stop being scared. Just well, you're, you, you're sitting on top of the mountain here at AIW as the women's champion. Tonight, Where do you go to now? Tonight I am really excited and a little, I'm not saying nervous, but this girl in wrestling tonight, I have watched a lot of her videos. She is incredible. Uh, Mia is very strong. She's competitive. She 
blew me out of the water the first match I saw her in. I had no idea that she was that good. And when you all told me I was booked against her, I was like, who is this girl? I need to look her up. Uh, I watched everything she had and I studied her as much as I possibly could. So tonight, I'm expecting this match to be off the wall. I expect us to blow the roof off this place. So. Okay. Also in that match, you're reunited with former TNA knockout dressing room pal, yeah. I will say. Gail Kim is the special referee. How do you suppose the relationship is going to go with Gail Kim as the special referee? You know, me and Gail never had ill looks towards each other. Um, we always got along in the, in the locker room. She is one of the nicest people I've ever met, unless you get on her bad side. I have not gotten on her bad side lately, so I should be okay. Um, I, I was assured by her that this match would be called Straight Down the Middle. She's here to do her job. She's here to do what you all hired her to do, which is to officiate this match and make sure there's there's no little funny games going on here. So I have the most confidence in her that if anything happens, she'll be able to handle it. All right, Mickey. Now, beyond tonight, Yes. okay, win, lose, or draw, Mickey Knuckles is a mainstay here in AIW. Besides Jessica Havoc, because you want that rematch, it's not often that the champion wants the rematch against the challenger. Who is it that you would love to face here in AIW? Sarah Delphi. I have not wrestled her since I broke my femur okay. in a match against her. I promised her a rematch. I promised her that we would start off where we left off. And I have been working out and training very hard with quite a few people to get a little bit more of a experience under my belt under different circumstances. Okay. So I'm hoping that maybe one day if I cross my fingers hard enough and say pretty, pretty, pretty please, if you'll book that match against them. All right, she is the queen of the death match. She is the walking episode of Cops. She is your AIW Absolute Women's Champion. Mickey Knuckles, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having, Pleasure me. For having you here. And great things in the future for Mickey Knuckles.